Okay, next paper is paper two. And its variant is 22, year May, June 2019. Now, question number one. Question is, diameter of the cylinder given with percentage uncertainty, we have to calculate absolute uncertainty. So 1.6% of the diameter, 1.6 divided by 100 into diameter value. So the answer is two into 10 power minus four plus minus. Next is pressure four times W divided by pi D square. Look, weight is given with percentage uncertainty. So put the value of four, multiply by weight value, divide by pi value, diameter square value. So answer is this. And then we have to write in two significant figures. So it must be 3100. Next question is absolute uncertainty in P required. So delta P over P, delta W over W, plus two times delta D over D because here is a D square. So delta P, delta W, 2.8% of weight, divided by weight 0.28, plus two times delta D over D into, the, uh, into pressure. Now calculating this whole, we will get answer plus minus 190. Now move to next question, question number two. State Newton's second law. Resultant force is equal to the rate of change of momentum in a body. And this is trailer, this is tow bar, this mass, and the velocity speed graph is given. So this is VT graph. Question is, calculate the distance traveled by the car from T0 to T10. So from zero to 10, we have to calculate the area of the trapezium, which is one by two, sum of parallel side, one by two into height. Our triangle area, or rectangle area, lengthy method, so ignore it. So one by two, nine plus 13 into 10, so answer is 110. Next question is, at 10 second, resistive force of the friction and the air resistance given, 440, 510. Question is, calculate the acceleration. Again, from the graph, acceleration is change in velocity divided by time. So this is a change of velocity, this is a time taken, so answer 0 0.40, and the next, we have to calculate the resultant force. So with the help of acceleration, F is equal to MA, M850, acceleration calculated, so 340. Now the question is, show that the horizontal force of the engine, so engine is exerting resultant force plus resistive forces. So add all forces, resultant force, air resistance, and uh, friction, so it becomes 1300. Next, determine the useful output power at 10 second, because this is question for the 10 second time. So at 10 second from the graph, V is equal to 13 meter per second, so power of force into speed, so 1300 into 13, so answer is 1.7 into 10 power four watts. Next, question is question number uh, same question, and it's C part. Look, after a short time, the car traveling at the constant speed and tow bar has force for 80, young model is given, original length given, and the cross-sectional area given, and extension in the tow bar is required. Young model stress over strain, stress force divided by area, strain extension over length, but here multiply by length over extension. So extension is equal to FL over AE. Put the values, force, length, cross-sectional area, young model so answer is 3.4, uh, 3.5 into 10 power minus six. Next question, the diver of the car sees the pedestrian standing directly ahead of the distance, in the distance, at the time 15 to 17, he operates the horn, the frequency of the sound heard by the observer 480 and the speed of the sound is 340. We have to calculate the actual frequency of the sound. Look, the car is moving towards the observer. So F naught observed frequency, VF over E minus VS. This observed frequency given 480, V is 340, F required 340 V. And at these time, at these time, the car speed is 14. So after calculating, the answer is 460. Now the next question number three is: State what is meant by the center of the gravity? 
So it is a point where whole weight of the object appears to act, appears to lie. Now in this question, this is a signboard and it is held stationary with this cable with tension 54. And the first part is calculate the vertical component of the tension. So T Y is T sine theta. So 54 sine 35, this is 31. Explain why the force on the sign at B does not have the moment about A. If this is the pivot, any force acting at the B has no perpendicular distance from the point A. So when perpendicular distance zero, so its turning effect, its moment is zero. Next question is by taking the moment about A, show that the weight of the sign is 150. Look at this. Three forces are acting. One is the weight. Other is the Y component of tension and next is the X component of the tension. So weight has half half 0.68 distance from this. This TX distance is 0.68 and TY also has 0.68 distance. So we can write F1 D1 plus F2 D2, F3 D3. So F1 is TY, F2 is TX and F3 is W. So I'm putting their values. TY is 31 into 0.68 plus Tx, T cos theta, calculate, Tx, 44.68, and weight multiplied by 0.34, so weight becomes 150, so it is shown. Calculate the total vertical forces exerted. Look, the total vertical forces exerted are Fy, W minus Ty. W, because both are acting in the opposite direction. TY acting up, weight acting down. So the difference of both is 119, so it is 120. Now the next question is, we have to calculate the ratio, the change in gravitational potential energy and the final kinetic energy. Look, gravitational potential energy, mg delta h, kinetic energy half mv square, mgh over half mv square, m cancelled, 9.81, and the height is given here, 4.8 and one by two times the speed is also uh, given 9.2. So 9.2 square is 1.1. Now the next question is question number four. For the progressive wave state, what is meant by displacement? Displacement of the particle in the wave is the in the specified direction from the equilibrium position. So distance of the particle in the wave in the specific direction from the equilibrium position is called displacement. Amplitude. Maximum displacement of the particle from the mean position in either direction. Because it has no fixed direction, we can take up, we can take down. Next question is, two coherent wave x and y meet at the point and their phase difference is 180. Wave x has amplitude 1.2 intensity i, wave uh, y has amplitude of 3.6. We have to calculate the resultant intensity. So amplitude of the resultant wave, 3.6 minus 1.2, 2.4. So resultant intensity divided by original intensity. Amplitude of resultant square divided by amplitude of the actual wave. So IR is equal to 2.4 square divided by 1.2 square times I, it is 4.0 intensity. Now the question is microwave, uh, monochromatic light is incident on the diffraction grating. Describe the diffraction of the wave. Yes, we have to define, we have to explain. As wave passes through the narrow slit, it spreads in geometrical shadow, which is called diffraction. Next part of this is, a parallel beam of the light consists of the two waves, one given, second given, and both are forming the third order maxima. Question to determine the smallest possible spacing D of the diffraction grating. Look, formula is D sine theta is equal to N lambda. So the longer wavelength must be used in this question because D directly proportional to lambda. If smaller wavelength is used and third order maxima of the longer wavelength will not appear on the screen. So that's why we have to take the longer wavelength. By using the longer wavelength, the answer is coming d 1.910 and we have to use this sine theta is equal to 1 its maximum value next the beam is replaced with a blue light state and explain whether the third or wavelength of the blue light is smaller than 540 and smaller than 630 thus the third order maxima will appear on the screen because spacing 
is equal to lambda d over a wavelength is small so spacing small so it will appear on the screen next question is about the electricity state the kirchhoff second law sum of the emf is equal to the sum of the all potential differences in the closed circuit. So this is a question. Now the question is calculate the combined resistance. So they are connected in parallel, one over R, one, one, one over R, two, one over R, three, and so on, this formula. So one over R, one over 90, plus one over 18. So answer is 50. The current in the battery, I is equal to V by R. So V is 4.8 and the R is 15. So the answer, look, 4.8 is given, the reading on the voltmeter. So this is the terminal potential divided by 15, so 0.32. Show that the internal resistance 2.5. Look, EMF is equal to last potential plus the voltage. So EMF is 5.6, IR 0.32 into internal resistance, and the terminal potential, your voltage is 4.8. So by calculating this formula, R is equal to 2.5, so this is proved. Next, we have to determine the ratio power dissipated internal resistance divided by power produced by the battery. So power across the internal resistance is I square R and power total IV. So I square into R 2.5 divided by I into total potential 5. So it is 0.14. So this is the ratio. Now, in this question, two batteries, two resistors are connected in series according to the Kirchhoff second law. So this battery is giving potential in this direction, this is giving this direction, so we can write E1 minus E2 is equal to I R1 plus R2. So 7.2 minus 5.6 I, sum of the resistors, so I becomes 0 0.27. So this is the answer for the current. And the next is state what is meant by the field line in the electric field. So direction of the motion of the positive test charge in the electric field is represented by the field lines. These field lines represents the direction of the motion of the test charge after experiencing the force. Next, an electric field has two different region X and Y. The field X uh, is less than the field in Y, the field strength, definitely. Field strength is represented by the gap between the lines, so the field lines are closer at Y as compared to at X. And the next is one particle is P, its mass given, its charge given, and the second is alpha. So the magnitude of the acceleration of the P, magnitude of acceleration of the alpha, F is equal to MA, so A is equal to F over M, mean EQ over M. So we can write EQ over M for P, EQ over alpha, so electric field same, so Q by M for the P, multiply by M by Q of the alpha by putting the value, one E for P, mass of P, 0.15 U, mass of the alpha for U, divided by two times E for the alpha particle, so the ratio is 13. Next, last part of this is particle P is a hadron composed of only two quarks. One of the quark is down, look at the charge, it's minus one. So from this, down quark has charge minus one by three E. Quark one plus quark two are combined to make this particle P with charge minus one E. So one of the quark is down, other unknown X is equal to minus one E. So down has minus one by E and quark X unknown. So from this, X is minus two by three E plus two by three is up quark. So minus two by three will be the anti-up quark. So the second quark is anti-up. So this is the paper.